Greetings and salutations, exiles. So here in this video, I want to talk about, uh, let's make sure my OBS is correct. Yeah, I'm good. I want to talk about, this is going to be a kind of a, a starter guide. And I'm going to talk through some some game mechanics and to help, help newer players uh, develop some basic understandings of how, how the game works. And because um, what happens is, uh, a lot of times players pick up the game and then they die so often that they don't continue to play the game. And there's that little little curve that they have to get over, that little learning curve that they have to get over. And usually they peter out around level 10, uh, 10 to 15. I see it all the time. I'll see some people playing and they'll get like level 10 to 15 and uh, they, they meet, you know, you never see them again. They're gone forever. You know, it's possible they roll, roll to another server, but I'm, 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 I've kind of noticed some trends over a, a period of time. So I'm just going to make a, a, a generic character. I'm not going to, I'm not going to get into, um, you know, how, how the character customization works because you just, you know, basically there's like four options in each one of these tabs. I'm just going to go finalize. If you want to change your name, you can type it in here, right? Um... So I'm just going to confirm it. This is my guy. I get the little video, whatever. So I'm in the game, right? And so the, the, the critical piece to this is there's two functionalities, or there's, there's a couple different systems. Functionality is the wrong word. There's a couple different systems that are, that are concurrently running. So you have your um, survival system, right? So up here in the top left corner you have your little your little dot uh which represents your water you have your little like looks like a little steak right which is your food and both of those are green 75 percent you have your weight it looks like a little like a dumbbell weight that represents your encumbrance and then there's the red blue one the fourth little bubble uh that represents how hot you are and that that is so those four bubbles represent four systems right there alone so the the water and the food represent your hunger and your thirst that's one mechanic the encumbrance is a separate mechanic and the the heat and cold is another mechanic engineered into the game so if i put on winter clothing and i'm in the desert i will i will have heat stroke and my health will start decreasing so vice versa if i'm in the north and there's a blizzard or if there's a, you know, it's, a, it's I'll get frostbite. And so you have to dress appropriately. Uh, otherwise, you'll t your damage will decrease over time. But I'm not going to get into the, the heat mechanic. I'm going to um, kind of touch on what to do to make it to where you're not dying all the time right out of the gate. And this is just kind of a fundamental um, uh, guide to... To, to survive and so um, as step one is you have the map so you hit the M key and you'll see that here on the map they have uh, they've added a grid system you know and they, they it took them about a year to in, implement this grid system but we are at F2 and as as you look at you see this river that runs east to west this is called the newbie river right here this is the what kind of people refer to as the newbie river so as a rule of thumb, you want to stay south of the Newbie River until you get to around level 10. And if you, of course, if you know what you're doing, you know, you, you wouldn't be watching this video. But if you're new to Conan, um, there's a lot of things that you can do. And technically, if you really like follow the journeys, you can get to level 10 in like five minutes. So it's, it, and we'll talk about that mechanism and that mechanic a little bit later. But um, to just stay safe, the monsters are pretty much easy sauce south of the river. And, um, of course, that kind of changes a little bit as you progress east uh, past past the J column because they do, once you start getting into the jungle, things become more challenging. But if you just stay here between I, I and E, or I should say E and I, uh, south around this general area right here, You'll you'll do okay. You can you can do everything you need to do up until about level fifteen or twenty, and 
and, and then when you die, you'll just respawn in the desert at these at these three. I think there's four. Maybe there's five locations total. One, two, three, four, five, six. Maybe six spawn points in the desert, and um, and then you just run back up. It's not overly painful. It's not a big deal. And you can see in the top right corner, just for me standing here, explaining some of these mechanics my water has decreased and my food has decreased by 25 percent so so when you first start the game there's a couple things that you want to do and just to get things out of out of and so every starting point has this this obelisk right here right and so i just discovered the broken highway and you can see how just doing that pushed my experience i haven't done anything right this is a fresh character and it has pushed my experience um, well, my experience is climbing for some reason uh, up to like 90%, right? So if I come over here and I talk to, uh, read this obelisk, um, yeah, I don't know why the experience, I just got a level and I didn't do anything. Um, see, find signs of intelligent life. That is one of the journeys. So if I, and they also up here in the top right corner, it'll give you your journey achievement so if i if i hit j you can see where it'll give you it's got 10 chapters it's got 10 chapters and of the 10 chapters it has of course they're all unknown right well the first ones are here but at you know chapter two they're all unknown and so you 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 either the voice is getting annoying you either uh there's two ways to go about this um you can also get to all your tabs through your um, through the top menu here, or you can just use the hotkeys. So the fastest way to level up is through your journeys. Just complete your journeys. And some of them are very simple, like drink water, eat some food. drink water, eat some food, and then so you basically um, go through and knock out these journeys. I'm sorry, I had to mute my mic, uh, Discord. I, somebody came in and I didn't want to have the, the audio um, ruin the video. So it's really, really simple. So like climb, drink, eat, use a bedroll. So you, I want to show you and this, this is another system, kind of like the four systems that I explained earlier in the top right corner. So if you think about it this way, the four systems in the top right, and then the one system on the top left, which is the journey. And the journeys, so if I just jump on this wall, right, there's my climb journey, and it gave me 25% experience. Okay, and then like kick, kick is a journey, right? So there's another 25 experience. And so if you come over here, every one of these starting points has a water sack. So I take the water sack, and I take the note, and he gives me a little phrase. I take the water sack, and I go, and I equip it in my hot menu down here, and then I'm able to drink from it, and that gave me 50% of a level because that was a completion of a journey, right? So, so I come over here, and I pick up some of these rocks, right, because I'm going to build a pickaxe. And I'm going to come over here and pick some of these bushes, right? I'll get some bugs, and the bugs will give me uh, seeds. There we go. And see how the bugs automatically equipped in my number two slot key, and they will expire in 30 minutes. So let me get a couple more bugs. Now watch. Okay, I'm just going to pick and wait for this, this guy to stop talking. And I'm going to pick up stones and sticks. Right, because some of these are some of these are easy sauce. They're trying to what they're doing is they're trying to integrate you into the journey system early on. So I'm just going to run through here. Now, even though this is the beginning start area of um, Conan, it still can be dangerous because it is so hot. You you it's possible for you to die from thirst. So the sticks are on the ground right here. Okay, so I pick up these sticks. 
Okay, now here's the other part that's a little convoluted, and once you understand the systems, you don't ever think about it differently. But in the beginning, kind of the big, the big takeaway is you hit I for inventory. The right side, if it has the blue, if it has the blue background or a colored background to it, means you can craft it. If it's on your left side, that's your inventory. Okay, so I want to craft. I want to craft a pickaxe. Okay, and so I've picked up six stones, uh, some fibers, and five sticks. Okay, so I'm going to craft a couple of twine. Right, so let's just craft ten twine. So I want to craft uh, a torch because the torch requires five. Um, you know, the resource thing is kind of spitting up over it. Uh, it requires five branches and five twigs. Right, so. I'm going to craft one because this is a journey and my focus is the journeys. Like, I, I, I you know, I don't know if I, I, if I really emphasize the importance of that. So my next thing I want to craft, oh, I want to eat. I want to eat the, eat the bugs and watch how the journey on the top right corner goes away and I get the, so eat the bugs, boom. That was like half a level. Now it's use a bedroll and I got to slay something, right? So and I need to make a, pick up some more sticks. And I'm gonna this this guide will go up to building a shelter, and this this is just kind of fundamental um, how to start, and it explains some of the generic crafting system. And I know I, I'm repeating a couple of things, but um, and I have to keep an eye on that on that health, and I have to keep an eye on. I'm just going around pressing E, and I'm just picking up rocks, right? I don't have to mine anything. I don't have to have any special tools. I'm just picking bugs and fiber and rocks just to get started on the introduction to crafting i'm looking for more sticks okay and and this is just kind of a cinematic thing right here the, the monster doesn't there we go some sticks right okay and i want to show you um a couple other mechanics because there's quite a few layers to this that then then initially that are um that are they're not really present at a first glance so now I want to make a uh, pickaxe, and I would make a pickaxe first. So I'm going to craft a pickaxe. I want to craft a bedroll. Okay, and then I want to craft, I need quite a bit of fiber, but I'm going to craft some clothes. Because these, oh, I see you gained a level because I crafted a tool, right? So uh, craft a tool. So what do I have selected, right? So I'm crafting, I'm crafting some clothes made out of fiber. And you can see them populate over here on the left in my inventory. And, um, okay, and th this stuff that I have right here, this royal breastplate, and th these are pieces that I got because I bought into early access. And so they will always be there. And I'll make a separate video about um, DLCs and how they're, they're, they exist in the world, but you don't have to, to learn them through feats. Okay, so you see as I craft stuff, it auto-equips. And I and he, so here is your armor. And so you, if I click on this, I can see over in the tooltip in the bottom left corner, it gives me the stats about the item. So it's light armor. It's of low grade. It is clothing. And then it gives me a degree of heat protection, right? Right here. So each one of these items gives me one to heat protection. And if I go to stats... I'm able to scroll down and now I have a temperature resistance because I'm wearing this cloth of two. And when I go back to my main, when I go back to my main, you see in the top right corner that little white bar, it, it dropped a little bit. So watch, I'll take all this stuff off and you'll see the little thermostat. You'll see it go up. Uh, I'll take it off, right? And you'll see it, it'll climb up just a little, a little bit. You'll see it's right there. It's right there above the notch, and I put it back on, and I can just right click, and it'll go back right on. Oh, I can't tell the. Oh, see, it bopped. It just dropped like ten percent. It just bumped down. Okay, so it, the better the clothing you have. So I have a pickaxe now. If I take the pickaxe, I want to show you a little kind of a trick, because you're gonna need a lot of sticks. Like sticks are everything in this game. So if I just pick up the stick, you'll see in the bottom right corner how much I picked up. So it says I picked up one stick and I have seven, right? The parentheses are seven. But if I take the pickaxe and I pickaxe the stick, 
It didn't go. I don't know why it didn't go. Come on. There you go. It didn't go. Maybe maybe it's an axe. Maybe I'm remembering that incorrectly. Let me craft an axe. Um, but if I use the, the correct tool, it will give me a multiplication of that instead of just picking up one. And so, you know, the amount of sticks that you need early game are pretty crazy. So now I have my pickaxe. And then I, I put my little dot on it. Oh, see how it gave me three. It gave me three three um, sticks. So it makes it, it kind of expeditely, it increases the amount of sticks that you harvest. Right? And so now I'm trying to, now I have to keep an eye on my, I have to keep an eye on my, um, some of these, some of these, uh, out of all these different shapes, some of them, uh, are bugged. There's like one shape that is bugged. It might be this one where the branch comes off for whatever reason. Maybe it's this one. Yeah, I think it's this one. For whatever reason, the axe will not um, will not chop it. It's just the one, like there's eight or nine shapes, right? There's eight or nine shapes and you'll come across, I think it's this one, right? You notice the similarity? Like for whatever reason, that shape is, but if I hit this one, see, it worked. And I do need to report that in the bug report. But anyways, so now I want to hurry up because I got like 10% water left. You can see it in the top right corner. It's kind of gotten like that amber red. Same way with the food. The food, though, I can just eat my bugs while I run, right? See how my my um, my little steak symbol kind of creased back into the yellow? And there are some foods that heal water and heal water and food so they're like early game and they have really good ex explanation um i'm sorry not explanation they have really good uh, uh the expiration they expire Ugh, cannot talk they expire uh they don't expire quickly so you have uh a longer so i'm going to show you whenever you discover stuff you get experience and then the, the the priority of experience is journey right your journey cheat achievements okay i want to show you this i want to show you this mechanic okay so as soon as my water drops i got a couple things going on right as soon as my water drops i got these imps chasing me and i got exiles so i'm gonna loot these eggs you can see in the right i'm looted eggs i want to show you what happens when you run out of water and if anybody's ever ever chasing you you can just run into the water and swim into the water so let me go to inventory and then equip these eggs okay and then I want I want to show you you can see the 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 NPCs the exiles are fighting um, fighting the the snail back or the um, I forget what they're called they're uh, shellbacks shellbacks Okay, there I went. I says uh, scout and exile camp because there was the little thing. She's chasing me, right? But now I'm I'm thirsty, and my, see my life is de depleting. Okay, these are all NPCs, so I'm gonna swim into the water to break aggro. And there's two things I can do here. One is I can eat an egg. Okay, and when you eat, that's the only way to heal in the game. Well, there's three methods. I take that back. There's eating. There's bandages and there's potions. Potions and bandages work the same way. So I'm going to eat another egg. And you can see that by eating the egg, it only gives me, it gives me like 5% um, fluid back or, or th thirst water replenish, right? But if you need water, you can just drink while you're in the in the lake, you can just drink from the lake. You just need to come up to it and point down a little bit and press the E key, right? And I drank a little bit and see how it just, it filled up like 25% increments and now my water is completely replenished. And I also can refill my, um, this is called a water skin, I believe. A sealed water skin in my number one key. So do you see how there's that little blue bar down at the bottom? Um, that means that that, that water skin has like 25% water in it, maybe 20%. But if I just press one, I'll refill that water skin. So instead of letting myself run completely out, I could have just drunk the water skin, but I wanted to show kind of the, the characteristics of what happens when you run out of water, what it looks like, and then how to quickly uh, deal with the situation by, you know, 
you know, getting some eggs or drinking some water out of the, um, and I typically carry one to two water skins on me and they're, so, uh, they're pretty easy to get and I'm going to show you how to make one, but we're going to focus on a couple of the journeys. So like one of the journeys was do a torch, right? Boom. There's a torch. And if you focus on the journeys, your leveling experience will not be painful. Um, so what does it say here? It says slay, dodge, and make a bedroll. So I already crafted a bedroll. So I need to make a I need to make a weapon. So that gets us to the other piece of this. And it's a little bit more uh, convoluted. And so I'm gonna spend a little bit of time explaining this. So your crafting recipes, you know, um, come from the feats tab. And I know it's, it, it kind of, you would think like, how does crafting related to feats? Because feats is something like you accomplish something. Um, so the, the nomenclature or the naming convention can be a little complicated. But uh, basically you learn your, all your recipes under the feats tab. And then up here at the top, it gives you your available points to spend, how much you've spent, and the level that you are. And so the faster you level up, the more points that you acquire that you can expend on feats. So like, I want a campfire. And down here at the bottom, my Windows activation thing is covering it, but it says unlock one point. And so if I click unlock, so that was a journey point too. Knowledge, one knowledge point spent, that is a journey. Um, so if I go back to inventory, click on the top tab, now you'll see that the fireplace is now in the recipes, the crafting recipes. So go back to feats, and then I need to make a weapon. So at these tops, you have, uh, you have the construction, the uh, decoration, the survival, the weapons, the armor, the religion, and then you have everything. And a lot of times, I, since I know what I'm doing, I'll just go to everything and learn stuff from everything because sometimes when you're like doing the construction it's kind of tucked away in here but if you just go to search and it, it'll show you what you can learn and it's 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 got the entire list so it's sometimes it's a little easier just to go oh i i need to do weapons right okay and this will allow me to make these two weapons the bow will allow me to make these three items. And then it also shows the continuation pieces that are connected. So like before I can learn Aquilonian bow, I need to learn archery. And so same thing with the foundation pieces. It's saying before I can make apprentice fence maker, I have to learn. And that's why these are green, apprentice stairmaster. And if I scroll down, you'll see, so everything that's connected with Everything that's connected with this first this first skill is going to be highlighted in green. My torch just broke, and it says "item broken, improved torch." So that's I'm going to explain that aspect next. So I want to make I want to make warrior right, or I'm going to learn warrior, which which sets me down the path. And you'll also see it here under weapons, right? Warrior sets me down the path of making these other items. So I'm going to unlock. And you can see I have three points left. And so I'm going to do construction and I'm going to do apprentice building. And then I'm going to do um, torch. So this allows me to make improved torches, or I should say torches, because the other one that I made was an improvised torch. And you notice that it has a one right here to temperature. So it will... It will protect me if I pull the torch out. It will protect me from the from the frost frozen north or getting frostbite. And so, if I'm freezing to death, if I pull it out, it'll bump it down just enough from frostbite to very cold, and I'll stop taking the damage. Will will go from like five clicks per second damage down to two clicks per second damage, and it just gives me that little bit extra. Uh, sustainability to get out of the frostbite area because sometimes when you're like you know you die and you run back to your body and you use the teleport or the obelisk and you teleport there and you have to run halfway across the you know frostbite zone if you have a torch on you just pull the torch out and it just gives you a little bit more time to get your stuff and get out of there okay so 
Um, so something you got to be cognizant when you're in this area, you're susceptible. When you're in these menus, you're susceptible to attack, dehydration, and everything else. So I'm I'm going to learn uh, box maker, which also later on opens me up to. Um, and then I'm going to also going to learn. Uh, I thought I, I thought I clicked torch already. Um, right. So I used my first five points to make some fundamental items. So I'm going to show you how to make, um, I'm going to, so when you chop down a tree, so you can see my torch is still broken. Now I can repair my torch. If I just click on it right here, you'll see in the right bottom left, there's the tool tip and impr uh, improvised torch. If I just click repair, you'll see the little gear here above the torch and it's repairing, it's repairing the torch. And it's, it's basically adding time to the bottom of that torch. Okay, so now I have three minutes of light on that on that torch. Okay, so I'm going to take my pickaxe, hit the A key. And the big, the big takeaway to all this is make sure that you, you know, things have to be in the hot keys in order for them to be uh, equipped or interact with the world. Very few things can be interact with the world uh, while they're in your menus. So, um except for food. You can eat food from your menus, like from inside your inventory, but the vast majority of everything has to be uh, in your hot bars. Okay, so you'll see plants. So as I use an axe, I want to show you this to you real quick. If I use an axe, it gives me a, a certain set of materials. So I get wood and branches. Wood, right? You see three wood, four wood, three wood. Now if I switch to my pickaxe, which is a different tool, it gives me a different set of materials. So as I click, I'm still getting wood, but less wood because it's not really the appropriate. But then it's, it also gave me bark. And so, um, see, I got a journey. I use a pickaxe to get bark. And then let me, sh I want, I'm trying to do it to where it, sh uh, it shows the bark as I explain it. So see, wood, 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 bark, two bark. And so you use bark for a couple of different things. Like one of the things you use bark for is um, a tannery. So when you turn uh, hides into leather, uh, bark is used. You also use bark to dry out wood to get to your second um, or your third tier insulated wood. Bark is, is important for that. Um, so bark is a very valuable resource that is used. Um, so sometimes, you know, people will just use a pickaxe to farm bark. I mean, the wood is, is not really their primary objective at some point. So, so based off of what tool you use allows you to collect variances of resources. Like a tree can give you up to four different um, materials. It can give you sap, it can give you bark, it can give you wood, and it can give you... Um, what are these sticks? Are these sticks? I can't. Branches. It gives you branches, wood, bark, and sap. And depending on what tool you'll use, you'll get a variance of those four materials. And everything in the game is like that. So when you mine stone, if you mine it with a pick, you could get you could get a little ore, you could get a little salt, you could get a little um, stone, or you get a little brimstone. And the variance of these materials are coal and these variances of these materials and the weapon that you use give you the variety so you can kind of tailor your experience your farming experience look eat a little bit you can see i was getting a little low and so you see where the thing pops out and it's regenerating on the on the upper left where it pops out and you're getting your regeneration so different foods have a different regeneration value so like your eggs um, I don't remember the exact number, but I believe they're 20 health. So you can see if I hit inventory, I have 200 health. So I'm at 188. So I'm going to eat these bugs. I'm going to hit use. So you can see it counting up right here. So I think these bugs give me 10. No, they gave me, I, okay, maybe they're 20. But the, uh, the bugs and the eggs, so you're kind of like your baseline low-grade foods give you 20 hit points. When you move into the higher stuff, like your premium foods, it'll give you up to 60 or 70 hit points based off of what it is. So those are like your tier three foods. I'm going to talk about this tier system in advance, and pretty extensive. But 
the big takeaway is is the higher the tier, the more sub components and the more refining that it takes to get to that. You know, you have to make like a lot of sub components to combine them with other components to make uh, more complex dishes. Same thing with like building material. So here, I'm going to close this off. I want to. Uh, we're going to kill something, and then we're going to build a. Uh, a small structure because I'm going to explain a couple of the mechanics so I have to craft so you can see that my apprentice building gave me these materials to craft and then um, I want to make a weapon so I need I need stone and I have my pickaxe so I just run over here to to some stone and these so any anything that gives you a resource is generally in in the a gaming kind of world is referred to as a node. So this is a stone node, right? And you can see as it crumbles and it disappears, it uh, and over here on the right, it's it's collecting these materials. So if I just do one hit, I got four and I have a total of ninety one, right? Four a total of nine, and so it's adding up. So it tells you how much you have in your inventory. And you can see my encumbrance in the top left is adding up. So as I hit, you'll see it. You'll see it gradually climb. See it. See how it's gradually climbing up. And as you get uh, better, better tools like steel, iron, star metal, you will gather more resources. And there's a way for you to mod your tools to where each hit will give you 12, 16, 24. It depends on how you tailor your tools. So there's a lot of a lot of customization in in the game, okay? So okay, so I have a little bark there. So now we're gonna craft we're gonna craft a um, a sword. Okay, we're gonna craft a sword, craft one sword, and then what I need to do is I need to craft a fireplace, and I need to craft a uh, a stone foundation one door three walls where are the walls right here right three walls and then when i when i build i don't typically use windowed they call them frames like a window frame um but i don't use framed walls or windowed walls because uh people can loot through them and so you can you know you'll have your workbench next to a windowed wall or a, a framed wall piece and people can just look in the window and loot your benches or loot the eye and they can see what you have inside your structure also on a second piece or an s second aspect of this is if it's a sandstorm and you stand in front of the window you'll take physical damage so so people can shoot through the window so it's fully interactive so you need to be cognizant of there's a degree of exposure or exploitation that can take place through, and I don't mean like exploitation, like the, the game's broken. I mean exploitation like they can exploit you not understanding the characteristics of how window frames work. So I got uh, over here, I got three walls, a door frame, a frame, and I, I'm going to build, I could build a little... Um, a little uh, crown piece out of thatch. I think I got it. Let me go back to feats. I hadn't leveled up yet. Um, so let's do this. We're going to come back to this. So I'm going to take my sword. Right? I got my sword. And they there's... With weapons, there are light attacks and heavy attacks. So a light attack is your um, left click. Right? So that's a three combo light attack. L heavy attacks are your right click right and so you can mix and match them so you can go light heavy light heavy right and so either that was a journey i just accomplished a journey from doing performing a heavy finisher with a weapon and so you can mix and match you can go heavy heavy light you know right click right click left click or you can go um say i'm not watching my my food and so therefore um you know, you got to be really, you got to be on top of the survival aspect. And you could see that there are mechanisms in play that will kill me, even though I'm not actively doing anything. I'm just standing here explaining to you game mechanics. And there are mechanisms and systems in play that will try to kill me at, at a baseline level. So there's, 
There's the the food, the water, and the we the weather will kill you if not maintained by by you not do, doing anything. And so even though my temperature is good, and you notice when I went from the starting area down here, the temperature dropped because there's some vegetation and it's a little cooler, and I'm wearing stuff. So it's it's in the medium, but we do have random sandstorms, and a sandstorm, you know, happens every hour, or every two hours, and, and a sandstorm will kill you. And you know, you don't have to; you just have to be caught out in the open. And the stand sandstorm lasts for like five minutes, and um, and then you're done. So here we, I'm going to kill this little uh, baby baby shell, and these these actually actually have multiple uses you can take the baby ones and turn them into uh put them in a, a pen an animal pen and turn them into pets or you can um you can kill them for hide so right i just did a heavy attack i got a journey okay and now i'm going to use a tool so depending on what tool i use let me go i'm gonna go eight because i want some meat okay so i got bone okay so let's go get let's go get another one so, so here's some eggs. So there's more food, right? Okay, so eat some food because I got to manage that. And now the eggs are nice early game. And so here's some aloe. These are some other recipes for potions and healing. And you know it because it has the red bush. But uh, I, I don't want to get I don't want to get too deep into uh, some of the mechanics. I'm trying to keep this like fundamental. And so I don't want to pull. Um, I don't want to go too crazy into the depth because there's a significant amount, like a lot of depth to this stuff, multitudes of uh, recipe combinations. So I'm um, going to use my axe because the axe will give me, um, should give me hide and bone. And so you can use the bone chips to make bone arrows, repair shields, make certain types of weapons. So, so every resource is a combination of multiples of recipes. So it's, it's pretty wide open. Like we have the sticks, remember the sticks, right? I just gotta get lined up, lined up correctly. This one will not do. This one is the one that's broken. You recognize them after a while. Come on, I can pick it up and I can pick this up, but for whatever reason, I need hides is what I need. I wanna make a water. Okay, here we go. So equip my weapon. I also want to show you, you can repair your items. So I have my stone pick, and I just click repair. And you see the durability down here, and it's using the stone. So in a way, this item generates materials that will keep it, in, keep it functional in service. Now I repaired it back to 100. So you can make your stone weapons and then keep them in. Okay, now if I use a pickaxe on it, let me see, five. I should get, okay, I got hides. This also gave me, the pickaxe gave me um, bugs. When I use it on a bush, it gives me bugs. I didn't realize that, that the pickaxe gave you bugs when you use it on a bush. Okay, let's see what the axe does on a bush. It's also giving me bugs. So it's, it's a way to expedite the harvesting of bugs. And bugs have a multitude of uses. If you put them in fish traps, you'll get certain types of fish. Um, you can use them for recipes. So it's, it's it, I know I've said this a couple times, but a multitude of death. I need more hides. So there's two things I want to cover here. Okay, there we go, gotcha. Okay, so I'm gonna use the, the pickaxe. Actually, I'm pretty sure, okay, I got some meat, okay, and I got some hide. So the thing I wanna make is I wanna make another water, um, where'd you go? I wanna make another water, so I need five and five, and I only have two, so I'm gonna make some twine. Okay, one, two, three, four. Okay, and then I need, I have four, so I need one more hide. Because as you explore the, the keeping up with the water, so I'm going to drink out of my uh, water sack, and you see it come up in the top right, and then I can come down here to the bottom, and I can refill it, and you see how it's um, it, it enables me to 
pool farther away from my water source. It allows me to go out into the world and explore more and not be tied to the water source. There we go. And so I'm going to use, so if I use six, that's not what I want. I want to use eight. I'm sorry, eight. Okay. Okay, there we go. Two hides. Okay, so now I'm going to craft. I'm going to craft my water, my water skin. Okay, and you can see down here the bar as it fills up is this the completion, completion bar. And so, the, you know, there are later in the game, there are other other aspects of crafting that take like 12 hours, 24 hours, and you're able to check the status of it by how where that completion bar is in the crafting. Okay, so we're going to go to feats because there's... Uh, we're going to go to just click all because I'm looking for, uh, this is what I'm looking for. So it tells me that, and let's see, these are more pieces. These are more roof, rooftop pieces. And the one that I want is the cap. But it's telling me that, okay, I got this. Why is this locked? Oh, it requires level eight. Okay, so this requires level eight. Um, and I am level seven, so I'm just going to do a couple more journeys. Uh, oh, so skirmish allows you to make throwing and daggers. Um, so I want to do the stairs, and I want to do skirmish. Okay, and I think I'm going to do torches also. Okay, so I want to make, so come back over here. So now I've unlocked more recipes. I want to make a pair of daggers, so I need twine. Okay, I'm crafting. How many do I need? I used. Oh, see now, I got to. I got to. I got to pick bushes, and later on you can craft a sickle, which will. Which every time you hit this bush, you'll you'll get like 15 or 20 fiber plant fibers, and it speeds up uh, significantly. So you can hear there's the uh, snailback fighting an exile. And something to be aware of is you can actually um, see so he's got blood on him, so you know he's in bad shape, right? I missed. Uh, he moved out of the way. So I finished him off. And then this guy, now I have to manage my stamina. The big thing, cripple an enemy. So heavy attacks will, see the little foot above his life bar? That means he's crippled. So I don't want to go all ham on him and do a bunch of attacks because I will not be able to manage my stamina. And because he's got a bow, I have to be careful with the range. So I want to, what I want to do is hit and then get away, right? I want to hit. And since he's got a bow, okay, and I want to just manage kind of like Step, step to the side and there we go. So you have to you have to manage the the uh, your stamina in your combat because that's going to be one of your weakest. And his loot, all he had on him was twenty five stones. So we're going to take that, hit the F key, and then also I can use the pickaxe on him, and I will get hide, hide, and body parts. And I, I mean. I'm not a cannibal, so I'm just going to dump the body parts. And you can see that that is a good source of hide. And then they have the camp over here. I'm going to kill this one more guy. Three. Okay. So this guy, right? He's got a spear. So, so I missed. Okay, now I want to get out of here. I want to get away from him. I'm going to use the campfire. To, and I'm staggering around, right? So that spear, because of the mechanism of a spear... I want to get on him and do as much damage as quick as possible because he can outrange me because of the spear. And so, um, and he had a bunch of arrows. So just hit F as your quick loot. I'll go to my pickaxe because I want the hide. And I'll farm him for the hide. I'll dump the human flesh on the ground. Although, if you are specced into it, um, you can absolutely eat that. There is a cannibal kind of build or a cannibal characteristic. So another piece that I haven't really gotten into are your attribute points. And early game, I typically just dump everything into encumbrance because encumbrance allows you to carry more weight. And when you're, you can always respec later whenever you want. There's nothing that ties you down or, or is 
forever. So just I'm just putting all my points in encumbrance. And, then, and reason being is whenever you get to 10, every 10, you get an additional perk. And these are your, these are your perks over here to the right. Like, um, you know, sure-footed, uh, pack mule. And so, and you can see every, every attribute has perks. But just as to start off, get familiar with the game, get to where you're not getting encumbered all the time. You know, you can have actually the ability to carry some resources so you can build a house. Just dump everything into encumbrance. And then later on, respect to something that's more uh, tailored. Now, you do have day and night cycles, and you can see the campfire, the exile campfires along the shoreline. So now, now that we've, I made me another water sack, so I want to put that in my inventory. I want to come over here, and I want to fill it up. See how it's empty? I'm going to press the 2 key, and I've, I've filled up my water satchel. But now I'm going to take it out of my inventory, and I'm going to, I'm sorry, I'm gonna take it out of my hot bar and put it in my inventory. And if I click on it, I can use it from here. So I don't need to have it. I technically don't need to have these in my inventory. I can have other things equipped like a bow. So let me craft. I think I learned bow. Did I learn bow? No. Feats. Right? Just go to all. Where's bow? I'm going to craft. Uh, what do I need? It says level. F do I not have the? Oh, I learned it. Okay. Oh, and I also have my roofs. Perfect. We're, clo we're getting close to closing out this video. So I want to craft a bow. And to make a bow, I need seven rope. So I got to make some more twine. I'm just going to click 10 because I'm perpetually, you know, twine is one of those things that you're just going to go through an exponential amount of twine. You, I mean, you might go through like 5,000 twine. Um, go back to bow. Now I'm crafting a bow and I'm going to show you how to, uh, oh, I hear the weather. I hear the, the night breeze. Um, and this game is beautiful. You can see off into the distance there, you know, there's like the, the buzzards circling something and the campfires, you know, the, the life that exists in the exile lands. So um, we're going to go back over here. So if I go on, I can bust out my torch, right? And it provides illumination. And on a PvP realm, though, you have to watch out because what, what can happen is, is people will see you running across the landscape with a torch and then you become an easy target. So, um, is my bow done? Where's my bow? So, so to equip arrows, I have some bone arrows and I just drag them down here and drop them and now my bow has arrows, okay? And then I press the one key. I'm going to wait for daytime, okay? Actually, I'm going to start a little building here just so um, you guys can see the snap tool while it's still a little dark. So I'm going to press the foundation. You see that, that little hollow yellow uh, shadow? So if I hold down the control key, I can raise it and lower it. If I hold down the alt key, I can spin it. So I can line it up how I want it. I just snap it in place. And then I'm going to put um, a door frame. And if you see how there it says outer outer face, and if I roll the mouse, the, it says the outer face, the text is um, turned around. So you want to make sure that the O on outer face is always to the left, right? And so I'm just going to snap it and then equip. I'm just going to make a box, right? Um, making a box. So that way when the sandstorm hits, uh, I'm not caught out in the, in the open. And this is also an achievement. Okay, I got to want to make some stairs, right? Here's some stone stairs. And this is like your go-to um, building. So let me, let me get the, the stairs. Okay. I had to equip it in my hot bar. Right. So now I can run into my building. Okay. Now I'm going to build a thatched uh, roof cap. Where did it go? It's right, right here. Craft one of those. I also need to craft the door, but the rule on this, this the, the, these building mechanics and uh, the geometries is the door is always the last thing to be um, applied because if you try to apply the door before the roof, the, the roof will bug out. So you just snap the, you know, see how it kind of wants to snap to a bunch of, so you have to make sure that it's lined up correctly. And then I'm going to make a door, just type in door. Did I? Okay, there it is. I wasn't sure if I learned in the feats. You know, so when, the way to think about feats is, is their recipes. So I'm crafting. You can see the status. I'll, I'll pull this out of here. These, when they're ghosted, that means you don't, you don't have them. But if they're ghosted like this, I could press four 
while it's in the hotbar and cra if I have the materials, I could craft another door, but I don't want to do that. And if I rotate the mouse, I'm able to rotate the way the door is open and how it's bound to the structure. So I'm just, right? And so now I have, I have a building, right? And I go in here and you see, you see how in the top right corner, the shelter tab came out and it's all the way full. So when you're in a sandstorm, you have to find shelter. And if it's half full, then you'll take half the damage from a sandstorm. See how when I go outside, it goes away. And then as I go back inside, the shelter tab pops back up. So you want to make sure when you're in a sandstorm, you're in shelter. Like that tab has to be up. Otherwise, you're going to take a degree of damage. Um, and it's possible. It's possible to run to something like this. Oh, I'm starving, right? So I got to eat some, some bugs. And I'm just able to eat. I'm trying to fill that. Oh, I ate some rotten meat. It's possible to get shelter to like go like some place like this and crouch down on not everywhere, but some places you can get shelter by by finding some type of structure. And uh, let's see if I can some some places will provide shelter. So if you get caught out in the open, uh, you're able to you're able to uh, kind of get some protection. Like this, this has some overhang. I'll bet you this does. This has some shelter. But that shelter is a big proponent of, of uh, I guess it's not giving it to me. Usually, usually something like this will give you shelter or a degree of shelter. Um, let's see if this works. No, no. No, this has some overhang. This might this might provide some shelter, but there's a way there's a way to get shelter without building building a structure. Um, anyways, I'm losing focus on some of my some of my key objectives here. I'm just trying to explain some of these these core mechanics. This might give me shelter, but there's a way. Up oh, there we go. See how it, it popped out. And, but it's only half. So if I got caught in a half storm, instead of every second taking like a five damage click or a 10 damage click, I would take half that damage because I'm half sheltered. Um, so hopefully that gives you some, some insight in, into there's another system in play, uh, like the food, like the water, you know, there's the temperature, there's the shelter, um, multiple systems that are concurrently running. So I want to show you the bow and I want to show you the bedroll. And um, so here we have an exile. So I'll use a bow, right? I'll equip a bow. Same thing. Right click is a heavy attack. Left click is a light attack, right? And when it goes ding, she's moving quick. Oh, I missed. Ah, I missed. So that's the problem with a bow, though. Oh, shit. That's the problem with a bow. So shot an enemy, right? And so bows are effective, but it's, it's, you have to be on the move. So you don't want to be, have heavy armor or equipped with a bow. And she, with that two-handed uh, hammer, she will, she will rock me. I mean, she will, she will rock me. So I have to, have to manage my stamina, let my stamina come back. See how it happened in the top left corner. And I'm out of arrows. So now, so what I'll do is I have to kind of run and then I'll do press my number key to keep moving. So that way I don't, I don't die. I'll equip these other arrows. I'll also equip my sword. She's still following me, but I'm able, I'm just put myself on auto walk and she, she'll go into that heavy. So I, I have to hit and roll because she's got that hammer. She still got me. And I have to roll out of the combat. You, you cannot let her finish her combos because if she connects, she'll just do a lot of damage with that weapon. So I just have to hit and roll. Right? And I have to manage. As soon as I run out of stamina, I'm done. And see how she follows. Oh, see, I let her. I let her uh, so I'll go back to bow. Oh, she got right up on me. But see, the bow actually does good damage. It does more more damage. 
Bow is bow is a good way to go early game. You just kind of have to farm out the arrows, uh, and still and at least until you figure out kind of how to manage your stamina. And as long as I walk, she really can't do damage to me. Like I just have to manage how I move around and and kind of there we go. I was able to use the bow. Okay, she, I don't think she has any loot. I don't think she has any loot. Okay. But I can always use the pickaxe to get some loot, right? Get some hides out of the deal. Okay, so now I have 18 hides. So I can use those hides to, to make better armor, okay? So in closing, I want to do the bedroll. I want to do the um, campfire to cook some food. And I want to do... Um, what other key component do you need to understand? And these these carry over throughout the game. You know the the the, the building structure, and you can see uh, find shelter is is a feat on there. But it for some reason it didn't it didn't give me the achievement. So maybe maybe my little house didn't um, maybe that thatched roof wasn't didn't didn't cap it off for some reason. Let's let's see. Maybe I have to. Build a ceiling, a ceiling panel. Let's see. Right. So close the door. Oh, there you go. It worked that time. So, and you can see we're in the top. The oh, it's completely full, and this will protect me from a sandstorm. So now I'm gonna equip my bedroll. Right. I'm just putting it in the corner. Right. You gained a level. Okay. So now I'm gonna craft a box. Uh, use your bedroll. So what this bedroll does is when I die, I will I will have the option to come back to this place as a starting location. And you're able to make a bed, a bedroll, and the desert will be your three starting locations in uh, that you get to pick from in the game through the entirety of your play experience. So it's important to maintain beds and bedrolls uh, on your bases or your key locations. They have different purposes and uses. Um, but just as a generalization, they become your starting point. So instead of starting from the desert and having to run all the way back here, now I start here, and I'm I stay. I'm just in this general area now. So dying isn't this uh, big ordeal. Okay. So now I want to make a box, right? And it's really if you use if you use. So I need twelve twine, right? So I can just type in tw uh, TW, and twine will come up. Right? Oh, so I need more plant fibers. Okay, so let's get some more plant fibers. I'm just gonna run around and so it's three plant fibers for every one. And it goes pretty quick. So I'll just get some more plants. And you can see how those items are ghosted, like the three, four, and six and my hot bar, they're kind of ghosted out. So if I click on it again, it will craft, it will craft another one. But I don't, I don't, I don't want to do that. So I'm just gonna just take them out of the hot bar, like you were to drop them on the ground. But they're not, they're not actual an item. It's just, it's just a ghost of an item. It's a way to kind of expedite the crafting process, so that way you can craft, and then when you run out of materials, you can gather more materials, and this, then keep hit spamming that buddy button and keep crafting those items, and so it it, it expedites things. Uh, so what was I gonna make a box? Right, I need twelve. I have 11, so I'm almost there, right? So I could, or I could drag this down here, but you see how it's blue. So um, that's one way to do it. And then I could just press six and craft the item. But that that is always going to craft an item because it has the blue background. If it has a, a color tint to the background, it it's it's a recipe and not the actual item. And, and you just, when you're done with it, you just can drop, drop it on the ground because it's always forever going to be in this menu. Okay, so now I want to make a box and I want to explain one mechanic about the box and it'll auto populate down here in my uh, hot bar. I'm going to go back to my little house. And so uh, I'm going to place the box on the ground. Three, right? It didn't go. See, what the X means, I can't place it. And if the little dot is there, I don't know why it's not. Come on. I think I'm occupying the same space. It's so tight in here that it's... Um, 
come on, stop being, stop being a problem. I think what it is is I was in this space, and so it, it bugged. It bugged. Come on, maybe I got to open the door. Okay, I got to go two and then three, and then it's being, I think I was in the same. Come on. Come on, stop being, stop being a problem child. It, you know what it could be? Is it could be the door. The doors uh, can be very problematic um, in placing other items because they share, they share some of the same space. Man, why are you being so invalid placement? Sometimes they it'll be it'll be an issue. Just get this right up against the wall. Why does it not want to place? Okay, two, three. See how I reset it though? When when uh, I can basically switch through items. And if you if you press the wheel, it'll snap to the ground. It'll realign itself to the ground. It doesn't want to go. So you can always place it outside the building too. Um, I can always place it outside the building. And then the big takeaway to this is now you have inventory access. And it's a 20-slot box. But you see how it says open above it? That doesn't mean that you can open it up. What that means is, is the box is not locked. So if you hold down the E key, you have a menu. And so you can pick the box up. You can demolish the box, you can cancel your action, or you can lock the box. And so you always want to lock all your boxes. And then you can see where it says locked, but because you're the owner, it's got your name under it, you just press E and you always have access, but it is locked to everybody else. So don't get confused about the open and the locked. You know, you always want to lock all your boxes. So that way, and with it being out here, um, since it's not on a foundation, it could it could decay quicker. Let me make a hammer. Let's see if hammer is okay. Do I have an? I need twine. Man, it's like perpetual twine, right? Twine, twine, twine. Let me get these eggs. So this is a, ultimately this is a good spot for a starter base because I have a food source that's right next door. You know, later on, I could I could do aloe. Um, I get some twine. I need five twine. So if I need um, twenty five, no, it's three. It's not five. Um, where am I? At? Sixteen, nineteen. Let me get twenty. Okay, now I'm gonna make a hammer because I want to show you what a hammer does. There's kind of a hammer is not is not what you think it is. Like it's not it repairs items. Oh, I gotta make make the twine first. Okay, so a hammer really is like an, a tool to use to figure out the status of an item or a building. Yes, a hammer can repair stuff, but that's like its secondary effect. Really use hammers to find out who it belongs to, how, how long it's been before it's been visited, uh, the overall hit points of the item, and, um, and etc. So it, it really... Okay, we're going to craft a hammer, and I want to show you this. I'm going to eat some food, right? And you can see my, my water is low, so I'm just going to go to my water skin. And you can see it right here in the menu. There's, I'm going to use this twice or three times, right, and get my water back. And I've only used like 30% of my water skin. Okay, and then I'm going to come over here. Um, I have my hammer, and if I press 6, right? I'm able to see that my building will decay in 33 hours. Oh, I gotta put the door on it, that's why. Okay, now, it still says 33 hours. So the state, the box is close enough to where it's, it's bound to the building. If I were to take this box and place it over here, it, it would be outside of the, the area of the building and uh, it would have a lesser decay timer. It might be six hours or seven hours. So you always wanna make sure that your items are on the same decay loop. So the way this works is, is if I don't come back and visit this, it will disappear in 33 hours. But if I come over here and interact with it, it'll reset the timer, right? Let me put, some, put something in there. I wanna get it out of my inventory. 
And then also, um, right, so I'm getting all this stuff out of my inventory. Oh, I forgot to put a campfire. I want to cook some food, and let's do this. I, before I go, I want to show you how to cook some food. So we have, where's the meat? I thought I had some meat. Uh, I guess I don't. Okay, take the torch back. Okay, we're going to place a campfire, which I believe is also a journey. Right? Okay, and then I need some food, so I gotta kill something else because this is a big, a big. Um, he moved right as I. You little rascal! Come on. They have. They do have a. Where do you go? They do have a small, a small hit box. So it, it is. There we go. And then I'm gonna use my pick to get some uh, to, some flesh. Okay, I got one flesh, and so I want to show you where's my base. Okay, and I'm gonna put the one piece of flesh in the fireplace, and so the fireplace needs a fuel. So I'm gonna use the wood as a fuel, and there there are so you have to equip it in the inventory and then place it in the fuel. Okay, and this tells me that this fuel will burn for 40 seconds. If I put more wood in there, I'll get more time. And then all I do is I press start. And you can see down here, it is cooking the shredded roast. Right, and now I have one shredded roast. This, shre this it will expire in one hour. And it is low-grade fuel, fuel food. So the advantage of cooking it is I will not pick up the poison effect for eating uncooked meat. And... It, the expiration date, I mean, it'll expire in twice the amount of time. So instead of only lasting 30 minutes, now it lasts an hour. And as, you know, if you get spices and you get other recipes, you can make more complex recipes that not only heal you for a greater amount, but they also last longer. And then you can also make a, a an ice box where they will s store indefinitely and you can use recipes for different things. Like if you eat spiced foods, it'll protect you from the cold because it'll have an impact on this, um, this on the top right, the bubble, the little thermostat. If you eat spicy food, it'll actually uh, raise your core temperature. Like you could actually put yourself into heat stroke if you're in the desert by eating spicy food. But if you're in the north where it's snowing and you're frostbite, it'll pull you out of frostbite because of... Oh, did I not equip the, did I not equip the, um, there we go. And I can eat it from here, right? You gained a level because I, that was a journey. And you can see it gave me 25% of my food. So it, not only do you get more, it like it fills this bar up more because you actually cooked something. So there's lots of secondary and third and fourth effects to all of these items. A lot of depth. So I think this will conclude my uh, starter guide. I know there's a little bit of rambling, but there's a lot of systems that are taking place. But the emphasis in closure is do the journeys. The journeys will level you up the quickest, which will allow you to obtain more feet points, which is another word of saying recipes. And then those recipes will enable you to move into better weapons, better building materials, um, better crafting materials, higher tiers of equipment. And so that's, that's the emphasis, is learning feats. Um, if you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe. I got probably close to 200. 200 um, oh, almost forgot the most important thing. When you log out, make sure that you log out in a building because your body stays persistent in the world. And so if you log out into your building, you have 33 hours before your building disappears. Like this building says 33, I, I, but if it, it should say 168. I think some of my single-player game mechanics uh, server settings are, are, are not correct. Um, but you would technically have a week before you had to come back and your body would be protected in your little shack. Um, if you logged out outside, somebody could come along and loot your body or they could chop your body up and then you would respawn in the desert. So there is, a, there is a, another system in play that exists outside of you being physically in the game uh, because your, your body stays in the world. Um, but yeah.
If you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe, and thank you for watching.